Hi everyone, um, I am Jeff Lawton. I'm going to look at a game from the Aeroflot Open by a 14 year old uh, new chess star, really, uh, Aydan Suleimanli, who uh, won this uh, tournament in Moscow on, on tiebreak. It was a group of four players. And this is from round uh, six. And at the time, uh, Suleimanli was um, a point and a half behind uh, the leader, Raif Mamedov, his uh, fellow grandmaster from Azerbaijan. And he's black against another Azerbaijan grandmaster, Vasif Dorabeli. So the game opened uh, e4, uh, c6, with the Karakhan, d4, d5, the advanced variation, e5, bishop f5, knight f3, e6, bishop to e2. So this was popularized in the uh, the 1990s, really, this sort of slow system for white. c5, bishop to e3, and now queen b6, which is a sort of a critical uh, alternative to the, the more common c takes uh, d4. Knight c3, and knight c6, and now uh, knight a4. Uh, castles is uh, the usual choice. Queen a5 check c3 and now uh, Suleiman played a sort of critical move uh, c4 which make, makes the position a lot more double-edged than the uh, uh, cd4 which I think is, is the more common move I believe so c4 and now uh, Dora Bailey played knight h4 which is also um, unusual in, in, in the position castles is the is, is the uh, usual choice so after knight h4, very sharp reply with uh, b5, knight takes f5, ef5, and now knight to c5. So now we see both knights being captured, uh, knight e7, so uh, a difficult position to assess already because it's, it's two knights against uh, two bishops. Usually um, you know, favours bishops, you would say, but in a particular position, it's not opened up yet. We've still got uh, uh, eight pawns on the board each, so it makes it harder for the bishops to find uh, strong diagonals. So white, white's plan is to, you would think, to try and open it up and blacks to um, keep it closed. But um, you know, the way the game goes, that rule seems to go out of the window. Uh, play the move b4, perhaps, perhaps f4 is... Uh, Sort of more circumspect, but after this, the game certainly gets really interesting. Suleimanli played um, the best reply, queen to a3, because he wants to hinder uh, stop a4, which would have would have followed otherwise. Uh, queen c2, protecting the c3 square, and now, you know, like I say, um, usually the the knights want to keep it closed, but here. Seems to be the other way around. It's like he's, he's rushing the play with the knights before the bishops can can settle down. Uh, so he played c takes d4. It's possible to play this, but then uh, I think black black stands okay anyway. C d4. Queen b4 check. Mm. And queen to d2, which. Um, uh, perhaps isn't isn't the uh, the best reply for white, uh, although you don't want to um, you know stop yourself castling. Uh, King f1 is probably probably the best choice because after queen d2, um, Suleiman played a5, which perhaps underestimated white's um, peace sacrifice. I have a feeling he may have done, uh, but because af after queen d, sorry after queen d2. Uh, King d2 and now f4. Um, it's not so easy for White because if he if he decides to play here, then you know his, the whole centre is broken up and it looks absolutely fine for Black. So in the game uh, he played a5, but then there was this like I say this strong undermining move, uh, undermining Black's queenside structure with a4, and now uh, f4. So it's a bit similar to what we were looking at. A, B, 5. C, 3. So this is white's uh, piece sacrifice. 
queen d3. It's possible that an improved version of it is, is actually to play queen c2. Uh, I'll just give give one example of uh, after f e3, f e3. Now you know you don't want to really retreat the knight because then uh, white's got white's got very nice compensation. Uh, those pawns are strong and uh, black's pieces are pushed back. Uh, so perhaps black could try this, but then after e d4, queen d4. Um, something like queen a4 looks like a, a decent reply. Uh, if queen d2, we can play king f1, and uh, white should be okay there. And if uh, queen c, sorry, if queen c5, then um, b6 check king f8, and now b7, sort of harassing black before you know he's got time to to pick up the b6 pawn. Rook b8, and now sort of queen a5 exploits the weak back rank. Uh, White should be doing quite well here with bishop f3 coming to uh, protect the b7 pawn. Uh, and if, if queen a5, rook a5, uh, rook b7 unfortunately isn't possible because of rook a8. Um, and if you make room for the king, then White holds on to the, the very strong pawn, and this is to White's advantage when he sort of moves the king, and then, and then something like rook c1. So queen c2 may, may be stronger than the game, but it's, it's a long, complicated line. Queen d3 was played, f e3, f e3. So this is the point of Dora, Dora Bailey's idea that he's sacrificed a piece, but um, in reply he's still threatening the knight, which um, Black has to do something about. And uh, White's got these, you know, really you know, a lot of pawns... Um, far advanced, which are usually good compensation for a piece, even though at the moment he's, um, is it 7v, 7v5, so at this moment it's only two pawns for the piece, but it's um, but it's dangerous company, and the knights can sort of easily get pushed around here. So Suleiman played the, the strongest move, queen b2, and, uh, castles, and now knight b4 hitting the queen. So the queen stayed in the center of the board with queen e4. The car source for black at last uh, gets his king out of the way. So now this pawn is uh, is very dangerous, but you know, so is this one. This is the one that white, white will soon start advancing. Bishop to c4. An interesting move was actually to play this, because white does play this later in the game, uh, bishop to d3. It's possible that um, you could play it here Sort of subtle point of this is that if, um, sorry, if g6, then uh, bishop c4, um, and then if the game goes uh, the same as the game continuation, c2, then this time bishop f7 check is good for white. Um, the difference is that in, in the game, um, we, had, we would have had this position, uh, and then the king can come here. But uh, in this particular position, uh, like I say, bishop f7 check, and now now um, the first point is you can't take that because the the rook's on pre on on a8, and if you play, then you play here. But this time after e6, the king is more open because this is not protected by a pawn on g7 anymore. And this is probably a good position for white, although it's, it's still very complicated. So. Uh, in the game, uh, Rossif played uh, bishop to c4, and now the pawn advanced to c2. So we can already see it's it's, it's becoming a, a very chaotic position. There's uh, you know both sides have got pawns advanced down the board, but you know uh, perhaps the queen also isn't so strongly placed as White's queen, um, and there's this and there's also a strong diagonal here for White, which is causing uh, problems to Black. But mainly it's the past pawns that make this game uh, fun fun and uh, very complicated. So rook a c1, and now rook d8, sort of trying to hinder d5, and now uh, bishop to d3, g6, and now b6. So white's reminding black that his own pawn uh, pawns are dangerous, if, and if he ever managed to get c6 in, 
it could be it could be lights out for black so knight ed5 was played bishop to c4 so I'm harassing the knight a bit uh, queen c3 and here um, bishop takes d5 rook d5 so it's difficult to know you know who's who's really playing for a win because uh, although white's a piece down uh, black can't easily um uh, queen this particular pawn on c2 if you move the knight then uh, um, we could perhaps take on c2 or if you, if you may play knight d3 you could uh, take on c2 and then take on d5 so so white played um, b7 to begin and Suleiman played uh, rook b8 and now white played e6 which turns out to be a mistake after a very strong reply f5 uh, g4 um, is probably the strongest move uh, for example if if rook b7 now uh, e6 and the difference this time is that if f5 uh, well actually if f5 in this position then uh, then e7 is strong because uh, uh, we're going to queen there and then queen f8 mate with the open f5 so So after g4, b7, uh, e6, black, black can't play f5. And a better move would be something like king f8. And then e f7 sort of threatens to play queen e8 check. Uh, and if you take, take, take rook f1 check. Uh, and now black can't move his king because he, he comes into a mating net with uh, check here and then um, check on f8 king g5 and queen f6 uh, leads to a checkmate if you, you, you can't play king g4 because of rook f4 and then uh, either rook or queen to h4 mate if you play um, king h6 instead of going queen here with a repetition uh, queen f4 turns out to Quite surprisingly, mate, in uh, one more move. Uh, if you play g5, then it's uh, queen f6, mate. And if you play rook g5, it's queen f8. Uh, and the same answer to, to to king g7. So, so after rook f1 check, black would have to play rook f5. This doesn't look like it should survive, does it? But it, it does seem okay after gf5 and then black gets a queen and now although black's king is wide open there doesn't seem to be anything more than a draw for white after queen e6 as long as black's careful f6 king h6 queen h3 king g5 and after queen check you sort of as long as you avoid this bullet uh, if you dodge that bullet with uh, queen h4 and play king h5 then uh, queen check and again king h6 and now they're sort of we're just repeating the position, and uh, there's, there's, there's no way for White to change things, and uh, it should be a draw. So, but in the game e6 was played instead of g4. Uh, Solimanli played the very strong move. Uh, I imagine both players were very short of time here. Uh, he found the best move with f5, and now um, sort of rook c2. Uh, uh, trying his last hope. It doesn't look like it should work, but um, it's actually a very good judgment. It's sort of a very dangerous move. After um, rook c2, queen c2, queen c2, knight c2, uh, it then played the move c6, uh, simply intending c7, and also this pawn is dangerous, and uh, there's a possibility of rook c1. So he played rook, rook here. Intending to meet c7 with uh, with rook b7, and then um, there's knight and pawns and king. The knight, rook, and the king can take care of white's past pawns, and uh, black's doing okay. Um, but he played the move uh, d5, which is uh, which is very dangerous. If you play um, if you play rook d5, then uh, c7 is, uh, is, is strong for white 
<clears throat> there's a crazy uh, line after Suleiman actually played the move uh, King G7, sort of uh, intending to bring his king this way towards the pawns. Um, there was a crazy line, I think it's after knight e3 hitting the rook and trying to bring the uh, the uh, knight back. And c7, as it turns out, doesn't help things after the, after uh, queen's takes. And then, you're, unfortunately, you know, you're, you're hitting the rook, and so you, you don't have time for this. Because after after um, either pawn advance, so black can move his king, and he's safely stopping the pawns. But instead of after knight e3, um, instead of playing um, that, black can go uh, d6, and then, now if knight f1, uh, incredibly d7 is um, is okay for white. In fact, it's it's pretty strong. And the idea is that after rook b7, you then uh, you know, it doesn't look like any. It looks like oh, you know, what's white doing? Because just king f8. It turns out. Rather crazily, almost looks like a some Alec old Alakine game. I seem to remember. It looks like e7, uh, e7 is actually strong, and then this way white white does get a queen. So a bit of a crazy line, but um, which didn't occur in the game because Suleiman played uh, king g7. After d6, his idea was to play uh, king f6, but it, it turns out uh, you know, short of time, but it does. It does give White an opportunity to uh, to save the game or certainly prolong the game a lot. And knight knight um, knight b4 was um, uh, a stronger move. And then intending if c7 to to sacrifice the rook and uh, Black's pieces are, are close enough to the uh, to the pawns. And so if uh, but the best move is probably uh, rook c1 against that. And after takes, takes black can uh, black can play an ending after rook b7. Now the king is threatening to come to come to f6, start rounding up the pawns. So white has to act quickly with um, something like d7, intending rook c8 and uh, and then queening. And it's a bit surprising that black well the pawns are advanced, but there's no way for black to keep his extra rook here. But he can still uh, reach a pawn up end game with something like king f6, rook c8, and then uh, there's no way to stop queening apart from checking down the back. Rook b1, king f2, and rook 8 to b2 check, king f, king g3, and now rook d1, uh, sort of intending to sacrifice, and uh, this is on pre. So uh, queen. We'd, we'd end up in this same game where Black keeps his extra pawn and uh, some prospects to, to try and win the game. But in the game, uh, we had the move King F6, and now D7, which was the uh, a mistake. But it turns out uh, that E7 is actually okay for White, and then the uh, the point is that if you play um, rook b7 to, to stop the pawns, cb7, uh, king e6, and now rook c1, uh, and white manages to draw this uh, complicated line. But the difference between this and the other line after rook a2 is that white can um, round up the a pawn and then it's, uh, it's a draw. But if instead um, Right, so in the game we had a uh, mistake uh, d7. It was very short of time, uh, Dora, Dora Bailey, so it's understandable. Uh, but he is threatening c7. But after rook c5, sort of strong reply, uh, he manages to, to stop the pawns, and now black is definitely winning the game. After rook d1, rook d8. E4. Now I probably should point out that um, if you try queening here, um, you know, blacks black simply you can just give back one of the rooks and then uh, you know, and then he's sort of rounding up the pawns and is completely winning. 
after that. So he played e4 in the game because this you know, had no time left. King e7, just making sure of everything now. Ef5, gf5, and rook d5, and uh, I think um, let's see if uh, Dara Bailey resigned uh, the position here uh, without waiting for the reply. Rook c6, and then uh, then Black's um, completely winning. So. Uh, a very very complicated game and very difficult to analyse, but it it um, you know I mean both players actually in my opinion negotiated the complications very well, but it, it, you know Sulemanli particularly seems to um, sort of enjoy this uh, sort of tactical positions. He showed a lot of tactical flair in the uh, the era flat open, so this win took him on to um, four out of six, and then he, he in fact won in round seven. And again in round uh, eight, so he's three on the trot, uh, took him up to um, six points. Uh, he was tied first at this point uh, with Mamedov, and uh, he drew against him in the final round. And like I said, and then he won, he won the tournament on tie break. So a fantastic result for him, especially at, you know so young an age, 14, 14 years old. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please uh, thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye now.